Hello, I'm Andrew Brace, and I'd like to welcome you to the latest Breeders' Masterclass brought to you by Yukonuba in conjunction with Dog World Newspaper. These masterclasses enable breeders around the world to access online expert opinions on a variety of important subjects. Through the Yukonuba Dog World Breeders' Masterclasses, enthusiasts can meet, maybe for the first time, well-known personalities whose knowledge of specific topics then becomes available to them. This comes to you from Long Beach in California, where Yukonuba is hosting its Yukonuba World Challenge competition, in which 41 dogs from different countries will compete to win best in show at what is now acknowledged as one of the most prestigious events in the canine calendar. In its quest to bring responsible and successful breeders, judges and handlers together from all around the world, Yukonuba has given us the opportunity to draw from some of the most experienced people in the sport. Do you look at beautifully groomed and prepared coated dogs and marveled at the artistry of their handlers and groomers? How much versatility is required to present different coat types to the highest possible standard? Hopefully, today we'll find some of the answers. Let me introduce our panelists. Michael Canalizo was a renowned handler, notably of the Grandeur Afghan Hounds, and has since become a highly respected American Kennel Club judge. He works as the director of AKC Event Management, so has a very busy weekend ahead. We thank Michael for his time. You're welcome, Andrew. Mary Dukes was a professional handler who achieved great success, particularly with whippets. Mary now works as an American Kennel Club field representative and has a special interest in the AKC's Registered Professional Handlers Program, for which she acts as coordinator. Welcome, Mary. Thank you very much, Andrew. The youngest member of our panel is Katya Rauhut, who began handling as a junior 11 years ago. Twice she's represented her country at Crufts, and she now teaches Germany's up-and-coming junior handlers, passing on her knowledge and experience. Katya's family breeds Lhasa Apsos and Tibetan Terriers, and she's competing in the World Challenge with one of their Tibetans. Thank you, Katya, for joining us. Thank you, Andrew. Peter Green is truly a legend in his own lifetime. Born in Wales, Peter emigrated to the USA many years ago, where he became one of the most successful professional handlers of all time. He is the only person to have handled best in show winners at both Crufts and Westminster, an incredible four times, and now he's taken his talents into the judging ring. Indeed, this year alone, he judged the Terrier Group at Westminster and best in show at Crufts. Peter, we look forward to your input. Thank you, Andrew. Mary, I'm going to ask you firstly, because I'm sure this is something close to your heart. Okay. Do you feel that coated breeds have an advantage over short-coated breeds in variety competition? I predominantly showed smooth-coated breeds. That's why I uh, asked. Yeah, that's why you threw this at me. <laughs> um, they have the advantage in that if, say, an Airedale, for example, doesn't have the best legs in the world, to some degree, a talented trimmer can, anything with hair, whether it be legs or top line or neck into shoulders, you can turn it into, you can, you can turn it into something maybe that it's not in terms of its bones underneath. You can phony up a straight leg. You can make it, its legs look better. Or I used to say those of us, those of us who breed short-haired dogs just have to breed them with straight legs and good top lines. Um, but that, that's the advantage that you can manipulate the coat to some degree and make more of the dog than it is. Whereas if you're showing a Doberman or a Whippet, what's there is what's there. And there's really no way other than, you know, making it as clean and shiny and having it as the best condition that you can, there's no way that you can correct any conformational faults. Sure. Michael, if I turn the question around, do you think at any stage a, a clean outline short-coated breed could possibly have an advantage over a coated breed? Good hair should be good hair, whether it's long and the correct texture for the breed specifically, or the short-haired dog has 
a shine and a silkiness and a, a, a feel to it that a healthy coat should have. I mean, you can have a bad short-coated dog with coarse hair or dry hair or dry skin, um, and you can have a long-coated breed that has the wrong texture. I mean, a, a thick, woolly coat for one breed is not silky and, and pref preferred in another breed, and you're a Yorkie, and, you know, so drama and, and the flow of the coats, and, but we also have our bad days because we don't look so good in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> in terrier breeds, uh, there's a lot of grooming and a lot of know-how, and uh, to keep t some terrier breeds in the ring takes a lot of, a lot of know-how and lots of uh, work outside of the dog show ring. It's continual work to keep them in a top in top condition. You know, in a lot of the terrier breeds, you can't cut the hair. You have to pull the hair. If you cut the hair, you lose the color and you lose the texture of the hair. So that's a seven day a week job, keeping them looking like that. And uh, so it, it, it's a very, very time consuming and also a lot of know-how. It's a lot of uh, people who are very artistic, get to do it a lot better than someone who has that eye for, or the feel for pulling their hair and getting them, keeping them looking right. But that, that is a, <clears throat> a lot different to showing smooth head dogs. It, it's, it's whether the handler can make the dog the way the standard says it should look. And it's very, it, it's very hard to learn, and some people do it all their lives and never get it right. It just is something, some people have uh, an aptitude for pulling hair and trimming hair. And even people with long coated breeds, um, like Tibetan uh, Terriers, that takes a lot of taking care of and a lot of know-how. But Terriers in particular, and um, Poodles, that takes a lot of know-how. How easy is it to fool the judges? If you're a good groomer, you can make a good dog look better. If you're a if you're not a, a, a very good groomer, and you might have been doing it for years and years, but you just don't know an eye, you can make a very good dog look just decent. You could spoil a, a, an excellent dog and make it look just another one. And you can take a very good dog and make it look super, and uh, if you're very good at it. And do many judges see through the brilliantly trimmed, not particularly marvelous dog? Um, it depends. If the dog starts to win, and he may have obvious faults, and, and uh, a lot of judges will 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 fool, get fooled by the trimming, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, but the good judges, if they know what they're looking at, you can trim it as, like like God trimmed it. And they're going to find it. Katya, you yourself have a have a coated breed. Yeah, I groom them every two weeks. If not going to a dog show. Um, if we are going to a dog show, because in Europe we only have the weekend dog shows, I groom him just before. And you know, you need the wellness from outside, so the grooming and the wellness from inside. So you need a good dog food. So we feed them Yukonuba because it really makes a shiny coat, actually, also for yeah, long coated. And it makes a healthy skin. And for muscle tone, you just, well, he's playing the whole old time in the garden, and that's enough. Michael, you had a, a coated breed, Afghans. What about your sort of secrets as regards it's, building the dog up to optimum condition and maintaining There's no coats? secret. It's a commitment to consistency. Whether you're a good breeder and consistently breed good dogs or you're a good handler and consistently win, whatever works, you stay with it, and if you find it successful, and you have to commit to it. I mean, you can't have good hair and good texture without good um, protein and, and skin t and everything. The health has to be there to produce the hair. So, and if you feed a product that's consistent, and that was, I mean, this is significant to Yukonuba because they were always consistent since the first time. Some companies would change, barley's cheap this week, so I'll feed the bulk of the product is barley or it's wheat or it's rice, and you weren't always sure you were getting it. So yeah. you have to stay committed to what you're feeding, committed to your exercise routine, committed to your grooming routine. You know, some dogs require once a month, once a week, whatever it is, it's, as long as that everything stays consistent and the dog thrives on it and, and you see the results in the end. 
you've been talking about the feeding, and it's it's absolutely an inside out. You can't feed a dog junk food and have it stay in tone and have its coat stay tight and hard and shiny. Um, and it, that, that was a little bit dependent on the dog. Um, I had really large paddocks um, that my dog spent most, a lot of time every day out in. They were out all day if the weather was decent. Um, and the whippets, a lot, most whippets will just, they'll run the fence and they'll keep themselves fit. Um, if they don't, um, I did have a, a trotter or we could road work also. But um, obviously because you don't have hair to cover anything, their condition has to be absolutely, I obsessed over weight. Michael probably obsessed over hair. I obsessed over weight, the dog's weight. Um, and that's a matter of, it, uh, you have to watch it all the time. You know, if they get a little bit thin, you have to up them a little bit. If they get a little bit heavy, you have to back them down a little bit. And I always did all the feeding myself, regardless of, of what help I had. I always doled out the food, because um, that's, in a breed without hair, that's really important. Peter, when handling coated breeds, with all the different varieties of coat, which are the easiest to keep in condition and, and which are the most difficult? Oh, breeds like Cairns and, and uh, Kerry Blues and South Curry Wheatons, and the, the terrier breeds I, that I dealt with. And uh, the most difficult are the, are the wire coated breeds because mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> you have to keep their coat at a certain length and, and uh, you have to have it nice and nice and hard all the time, the texture of the hair. And uh, just like <clears throat> in those breeds, they have to be fit, they have to have good muscle tone. And uh, yeah, they have to be good in the inside so they grow good hair. If they don't, if they don't grow good hair unless they, they ha are having good food, you have to watch how much food they're getting. So that, like Mary said, they don't get too fat, they don't get too thin. So as a, as a uh, handler, you have to know each dog who needs a lot of food, who needs a little food. Uh, every dog is individual. You always have to give them the best. And some dogs need more additives than other dogs. For other dogs always look beautiful, always stay in shape with not too much work. Each dog is individual. Some need, need uh, a lot more grooming, a lot more attention than, than the other breeds. In terms of muscle tone with your breeds, diet being important? Diet's very important, always has. Mm -hmm. When I would get a new dog in the kennel, the first thing I'd make sure he didn't have any internal or external parasites. That's very important. Uh, make sure that uh, they eat their food every day. You know, whether they, if, if you find out that the dog doesn't like to eat, uh, you try them with, with extra little delicacies in the, in the main meal. A meal is the big part of a dog's conditioning. You add things to make the meat, but nowadays with uh, prime brands like Yukonuba, um, their food alone is enough to keep a dog in good condition. But one dog uh, might only need Yukonuba and eat it like crazy, but uh, the next dog in the next pen, he, he doesn't like it as much, so you have to give him some other attraction to make him eat. But sure. you have to make sure exactly that these dogs are getting enough food every day. It's no good saying, oh, he ate today. Well, he didn't eat, he didn't eat yesterday. Well, maybe he'll eat tomorrow. You have to know that the dog is getting this much food. Otherwise, you can't keep them in condition. They have to have the same amount of food every yeah. day and know how much food. Michael, do you think the quality of protein in the diet makes a difference? Absolutely. I mean, you certain, the quality of the hair can be affected by outside conditions. Mary has dogs that run all day and if you don't have the right level of the proteins balances then the hair dies off and that dead hair gets sun bleached easier than not or if you have a, a shedding breed you're gonna have a heavier a shed if the, you don't have healthy strong coat or I'm sure when Peter pulls a poorly textured wire coat it's got to hurt a little bit more than a healthy one coming out of the, the shaft. Sure. It's, it's the hair, the skin, the muscle tone, all one whole package. You had a, a coated breed, Afghans. How often did you bath your Afghans when you were seriously campaigning? Never. And I, 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 it, was, it was my routine, the consistency. A show dog got bathed once a week and never in between. Really? You never brushed a di dirty dog. That would just ruin it. And I have to say, certain dogs with the right kind of texture, the dog I put up in, in the World Show, she told me that dog who won the group at the World Show hasn't been bathed in a month. Really? And he looked magnificent. And I know I had one dog in many years, 
and the great handler, Chris Terrell, with a great winning dog, had one, and he said, you just spray a little water, and there are certain dogs that are just great, no matter, from every aspect, whether they eat on the road, they travel well, they condition themselves, the coat's perfect, their attitude's perfect, and those are the dogs that we all see and all want and all have had, and, and it's part of it. Every element of the dog has a certain uniqueness and specialness. So do you think that possibly today we, we might have become a little obsessive, and I mean possibly in the States more so than anywhere else, about this bathing, blow drying every single show? Well, I'll take exception to the States because I think over in, in certain areas across the pond I see more <laughs> coat on breeds that don't necessarily need it. A good working coat, a dog that would go out and work the field, they'll regenerate the coat, so yes, if you don't let them out and run, they're going to have more than they need to have. Sure. But um, if it's the right texture and it's the right amount, and if you have too much, it ruins the silhouette or the outline of the breed, mm -hmm. you're not doing it any favor. Sure. It's just the, the quality of the coat should always override the quantity of the coat. Some kennel clubs have very strict rules about applying foreign substances to dogs' coats. How far did you bend the rules, Peter, when you were showing? I don't mind if, if uh, like some of the English can of object to even putting white chalk in to make them look clean. So <clears throat> that, that's taken it a little far because the, it says that you can put chalk in, but you have to brush it out. So you don't brush as much out if the dog needs a little bit more bulk in his legs or whatever it is. <laughs> but. Um, so where do you I, I, I think that um, we have now people who can, who are actually beauticians that are very good dog handlers, and, uh, and they make their dogs look beautiful. And if they make them look beautiful and they haven't actually changed the color of the dog or the patches on the dog, or, I think if the dog looks beautiful and he looks the best he can possibly look, so if they pull a little brown hairs out from where they shouldn't have been or made the brown hairs look a little browner. A little browner. So <laughs> as long as the, the dog looks natural, then they did a hell of a good job and I'd put them up. Michael, where do you stand? I mean, now you're... you're well, the premise is to evaluate breeding stock. I mean, you can have a, a, a beautiful dog that's perfect in conformation and shoulder and balance and character and eye color and things you can't change and just because the handler may be a little too assertive or too artistic, that doesn't mean that his floor or his over enhancement is gonna come through the gene pool. Um, you know, so it's, it's, you have to pick your poison if it's a decision between two, unless the standard is specific. My breed says should not be shown, it should be shown in its natural state and has to have a unique certain type texture to the saddle coat. And if they shave it off, we're so it's listed, a fault, a lack of mature saddle in my breed. So I have to fault the dog that's artificially been enhanced in that instance. But if, you're, if you have a dog and you can pull it instead of hard scissoring it, but the great handlers learn the art of doing it correctly. They don't get aggressive. And once you cut a hard edge on a, on a breed that's not supposed to be trimmed, it's done. Sure. You have to spend a lot of time to put it back into a natural appearing. But a great judge will look past it, and you have to trust them to say, first, I'm going to make sure it's the right temperament, it's the right shape, it's the right movement. Then, you know, I've handed people ribbons on the quality dog that I know has a painted face. And I'll look at it, and I said, ma'am, would you do me a favor? Yes, sir. I said, let me know if this dog passes on those dramatic markings he carries. <laughs> Thank you. And this, this way, it's my little way of sharing to them, I know what you're doing. And you're going to find out when you breed this dog, you're going to have pale-faced Great Danes because you keep painting it, you forget where even the good color was. Mm -hmm. So it's, you're only fooling yourself. You can fool some of them some of the time and some of them not. Mary, have you got any thoughts on enhancement? American Kennel Club policy does not permit the use of foreign substances. That's all I have to say. Perfect. What a wonderful way to wind up our Reader's Masterclass on what makes a world-class groomer. So I'd like to thank our four experts for sharing with us quite a number of their secrets today. So a big thank you to Michael, to Mary, to Katya, and to Peter. Thank, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much.